Uh, this is Metro, uh, released about a month ago um, with both ray tracing and DLSS at launch. Um, it's the latest installment and the biggest by far so far of the successful Metro series developed by 4A Games. Um, and it takes you on a journey through post-apocalyptic Russia. It's an extremely moody game, kind of a little creepy, and uh, uh, you know, it's, it's very nice what they've done with uh, just the art direction combined with, uh, with ray tracing. And this, by the way, is an in-game shot, right? So it, it looks like this in the game. So in Metro, uh, ray tracing used for, is used for dynamic global illumination. Um, the game computes one bounce of uh, indirect light from sunlight. Um, so looking at the RTX off picture here in the, in the top left, um, you can see it starts from you know, direct light hitting the floor and then some kind of ambient term, kind of what you would do usually, uh, ambient plus some uh, GI approximation uh, that you typically do with raster light probes and th things like that. Um, Ray tracing is used here to compute with a, a single ray per pixel, or in some cases, depending on the quality setting, a ray every two pixels. Uh, compute an AO pass and a GI pass with the same ray. Um, and then multiply those two terms or add them to the, the lighting terms that the engine is already computing for the, the raster passes. So it's, it's kind of an artistic mix. Uh, which is very much on purpose because the, the art direction for this game had to, to go a certain way. A lot of the, uh, similar to Battlefield, a lot of the assets and the art and the style was already done uh, you know, and, and locked down before the developer actually had the chance to look at ray tracing, um, which makes this very challenging, right? You can't just throw away the gameplay uh, because you have new lighting effects, especially in a game like Metro where it's, a lot of it is about stealth and dark corners and things like that. So they had to make sure that this still looks right with both RTX on and off and doesn't break gameplay. Um, so with ray tracing on in the, in the uh, bottom right, um, we see how light nicely bounces off the floor and onto the ceiling. Uh, so we get this one bounce indirect illumination. Um, and actually, if you see the, if you look at the missing board there uh, in the ceiling uh, without ray tracing, there's kind of a lot of light in there uh, and it's darker, uh, you know, above the ceiling uh, with ray tracing on because the bounce light just doesn't go there. And it's something that the raster solution can't approximate. So let's look at a couple of examples. Uh, so this is what it looks like by default, uh, no ray tracing. Doesn't look bad, right? Pretty, uh, quite a pretty game. If we turn it on, suddenly it looks a lot more natural. Uh, things just seem to fit in better. Uh, I'm gonna flip back again. If you look at the, the snow plow there and the railing on the, on the uh, train car, suddenly it seems like it's glowing and it doesn't really fit, right? And there, there's probably some sort of, you know, not enough resolution in the voxel grid or I don't know what's going on, but it's, you know, essentially a light leak. Uh, that's just, it just doesn't happen with, with ray tracing if, if we get the correct solution there. Here's another example. No ray tracing and ray tracing on. So you can see how the, the extra occlusion there uh, really adds a lot of depth to the image. Um, it's almost like you know someone turned on the 3D, right? <laughs> Here's another interesting one. So I'm gonna flip back and forth on this one a couple times. Uh, so look at some of the details, like this ball, for example, the, shade, the shadowed uh, region of the ball, if I turn RTX on, it receives the bounce light from the floor, right? So the, the shadowed region gets a little bit brighter. Um, if you look at the pillow that's sitting on the floor, uh, I'm pointing at my screen. If you're looking at the pillow that's sitting on the floor on the very right, it looks kind of like it's floating. Uh, and with ray tracing, it gets a nice contact shadow. It really looks like it's sitting on the floor where it belongs. Um, and then very interesting on the, on the very left side, this, uh, this board there or the, the wall, uh, Kind of looks pretty bland without ray tracing. But if I turn it on, it gets a nice indirect shadow. So indirect shadow from a dynamic object is not, not something you typically see in a game. And then yet, let's look at yet another one. So if you look at the shoe on the couch, it's kind of the back of it. Looks like it's glowing a little bit. That seems to be another type of light leak or something. And again, it looks just like it actually belongs there uh, if we turn on GI. So uh, this is Metro, uh, again, a very pretty game, uh, uses ray tracing for uh, you know, very nice uh, uh, GI effect. Um, I, I highly recommend you, you check it out. All right, 
Let's take another one. Uh, this is Control, an upcoming game by Remedy. Um, Remedy is a Finnish developer, uh, best known for Quantum Break and Alan Wake and Max Payne. Um, they also have a history of pushing graphics to the limit, so it's, it's, it hasn't been a surprise to us that they were one of the first, uh, first developers to jump on ray tracing. Um, and Control is notable because it's uh, gonna be one of the first games to incorporate not just one effect with ray tracing, but actually three at the same time. So they're gonna do uh, ray traced shadows, ray traced reflections, and ray traced GI all at the same time. So let's just take a look at uh, what this looks like. If I can, yeah. The research bureau. There's some supernatural forces going on. So you see people floating in midair. It's not a bug. <laughs> look at the reflections on the floor. It's like it's almost like you can feel the wax uh, that they use to clean it. RTX off. Still some SSR reflections. Doesn't look too bad, but much less fidelity, of course. Let's look at some gameplay. Are you ready? Let's go. You'll see in a moment, a lot of the, uh, the environment is, is actually dynamic. A lot of it is destructible, moving objects. Uh, there we go. You can make a real mess of this place. And the lighting is uh, fully dynamic. There's a little bit of baking going on, but most of it is completely dynamic. No matter how much you make a mess of it, the lighting always looks right. Every time. Choosing a director, time to all objects of power. In terms of Turning GI on and off. You can see how it doesn't look quite right. Yes. Again, some things seem to be glowing. The white non space, the ever present reflections. Of course, works on dynamic objects. Uh, All linked. Completely. Intrinsically tied in terms of who controls them. And pixel perfect contact shadows or, or shadows on even. Difficult objects, like look at the binder that's on the desk. You get a, a very thin so object that still has a shadow. Important. Very hard to do. And of course, completely Most dynamic. The we can talk in broad. All right, so this is Control. Uh, super pretty game. Uh, I can't wait for this to come out. Uh, it's going to be out late summer. Um, and yeah, it looks like this. Uh, this is again an in-game in shot, I think. Uh, for most of us, if you had seen this shot, uh, you know, not too long ago, uh, at least I would have thought it comes out of an, an offline render right and now. Uh, here we are walking through this environment in real time frame rates and not only walking through it, but interacting with it and destroying things, blowing stuff up and it, it always looks correct. So very impressive stuff.